Today we're looking at President John Tyler. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. John Tyler was the 10th President of the United States from 1841 to 1845 and was a member of the Whig Party. He is the first Vice President to take the position of President after the death of the previous elected U.S. President. The 9th President, William Henry Harrison, died of pneumonia only 30 days after he was inaugurated. Some called Tyler his accidency because of the manner in which he took the office. John Tyler was born March 29, 1790 at his family's plantation just southeast of Richmond, Virginia. His father was a wealthy planner, which allowed John to be well-educated, and he attended the College of William and Mary and then studied to become a lawyer. At the age of only 21 in 1811, he was elected to his first political position as a member of the Virginia State Legislature. With the outbreak of the War of 1812, Tyler, you know, expressed his strong anti-British feelings, and he organized a militia to defend Richmond. The militia never saw any action, and Tyler then continued his political career. In 1816, Tyler was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served until 1821. He was a strong supporter of states' rights and a supporter of slavery. In 1820, when the Missouri Compromise was proposed, Tyler opposed it on the grounds that he believed each individual state should have the power to decide what to do about the issue of slavery and not the federal government making the decision. He continued to vote against regulations on slavery in new territories. In 1825, he was elected to be the governor of Virginia, where honestly he really didn't do much except for give the eulogy at Thomas Jefferson's funeral. In 1827, he was elected to the U.S. Senate, where he served until 1836, and it was during his time here in the Senate that he opposed many of then-President Andrew Jackson's policies, despite the fact that they were both Democrats, especially during the nullification crisis, in which, again, Tyler argued for states' rights against Jackson that argued the federal government had more power. In fact, Tyler's opposition of Jackson drove him away from the Democratic Party, and he became a member of the new Whig Party in the 1830s, which was basically formed out of opposition to Andrew Jackson. In 1840, he was asked to be on the presidential ticket with William Henry Harrison, and it was hoped that Tyler's ties to Southern states and his states' rights ideas would bring in Southern votes. They ran on the slogan of Tippecanoe and Tyler too, since Harrison was famous for his victory at the Battle of Tippecanoe in Indiana. The ticket was victorious over the incumbent president, Martin Van Buren, and on March 5, 1841, Harrison was inaugurated as president, and then Harrison died a month later on April 4, 1841. After a little confusion as to how the vice president would be promoted to president, on April 6, 1841, John Tyler was sworn in as the president of the United States at age 51. Now, up to this point, you may notice I haven't mentioned anything about Tyler's personal life. In 1813, he met and married Letitia Christian in Virginia. Together, they would have eight children. But in 1839, Letitia suffered a stroke which left her paralyzed. And so when John Tyler became president, his daughter-in-law, Priscilla Cooper Tyler, took on the role of first lady in hosting White House events. In 1842, Letitia had another stroke and died, becoming the first first lady to die while in the White House. But then in 1844, while still president, Tyler married Julia Gardner, who was 30 years younger than him, and he is the first president to be married while serving as president. Gardner and Tyler would go on to have seven children, so with a total of 15 children, John Tyler had more children than any other U.S. president. But as far as Tyler's presidency, he very quickly became very unpopular with his own Whig party because he opposed legislation they were trying to pass. In fact, by 1843, almost his entire cabinet had resigned, and the Whig party had basically disowned Tyler and actually attempted to impeach him after Tyler vetoed legislation to create a national bank. So Tyler Tyler was really a president without a political party. Despite this, there was important legislation passed uh, while he was president, such as the Log Cabin Bill, which enabled settlers moving west to claim 160 acres of land before it was offered to be sold to the public, and later they could come back and pay only $1.25 per acre of land. Also during Tyler's presidency, border disputes between the U.S. and Canada were settled. Texas was officially annexed, and a treaty was signed with China to open Asian ports to U.S. trade, and on his final final day in office, Tyler signed legislation to make Florida the 27th state. Tyler attempted to run for a re-election as a third-party candidate, but with no major party behind him, he quickly dropped out as Democrat James Polk was elected as the next president. After leaving the presidency, he retired to his plantation in Virginia, and in 1861, as the Civil War was about to begin, he headed a peace conference in Washington, D.C. that attempted to stop the war. Obviously, he was unsuccessful. 
He then voted in favor of Virginia seceding from the Union and was elected to the Confederate House of Representatives at the age of 71. However, he never took his seat in the Confederate legislature as he died on January 18th of 1862 in Richmond, Virginia. Interestingly, though, the U.S. government did not recognize his death officially or really have a state funeral or anything because at the time he was considered to be a traitor. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.